Welcome to another episode of the Spiritual Playboy. It is May 3rd. We are in Crete, Greece. I have my co-host here, Alaya Love from Toronto, international traveler, yogi, tantric yogi, as we enjoy the Cretan landscapes and gifts. So today we've decided to go check out another cave. It is uh, the cave, uh, the birthplace of Zeus. So Zeus known as um, the thunder god. And here is said, uh, this is where he was born because his mother had to hide him from his dad because his five uh, previous siblings were eaten by his dad. So you could go check out the mythology of Zeus to um, find out more information. Uh, so yeah, we're, it's called the, the Cave of Dictyon and it is in Crete. And so this is our journey to Dictyon Cave. Here we go. I just noticed as we're driving through these farmlands, uh, I mentioned to Elia that I, uh, that I felt we entered into a, a different energetic field. Vortex, maybe, and uh, what did you say? Um, that I'm noticing and feeling we're absolutely surrounded by mountains. Every we're in the we're in the center of this. Um, yeah, the mountains absolutely surrounding us at 360 degrees. And this this cave we're going to, Zeus's cave, where he was born, where it was said he was hidden to be protected. That's what this feels. It feels like the mountains are here as they're overseeing and they're protecting this area, this field at the moment. talking about uh, just having trust and faith that as we do our work that um, flow happens under a certain amount of uh, unseen forces that seem to take care of us and this came up because uh, we're doing this hike yesterday as I was not feeling well. I was going through this uh, this cramping that I was having for reasons I didn't know of that were healed in the cave. And I would not have been able to do this hike yesterday at all. And this is where we had planned on coming. And it just turned out that we went the other way. We didn't come here. And what I've been feeling really strongly about is how much a part we are of this co-creation of the universe, co-creation of our lives. And the more that we are following our heart and following our true mission, our true path, the more source, divine energies, universe, support us and help really lay down the path to ease our way. But within that, the more we become aware, and the more that we learn on this path, the more we're held accountable. So the more we stay in line, the more we're supported. And the more we knock out of the line, <laughs> the more the messages become very strong. Yeah, and it's the idea of the, how, like, when do you go unconscious? When do you lose presence? Uh, an element of uh, the masculine is this ability to hold presence, not to lose presence. And it's like when we lose presence, for example, you're in a se sensual, sexual connection with someone and you go in your mind or you go in your, your objective, your goal, ideas and you lose presence, you lose the presence of what's going on, what energies are alive in the subtle realms in front of you it's like that's when bad shit happens that's when people get raped that's when people get assaulted. So the masculine is really about 
staying present. The other side of that as well is when that masculine energy is staying present. It's not just you're avoiding bad things happening, you're inviting a whole other, the other half, this divine, the divine forces working through you as well. So in this co-creation, you're feeling what you're bringing to that present moment. And the more you're present, the more that comes in. More love, more connection, more magic. And so we could use this path, for example, and these rocky steps as a symbol for staying present. Like every step has to be a conscious step. If we are like all in la la land and talking and not paying attention and not really connected with the earth. You're gonna slip and fall. You're gonna slip and fall. <laughs> Bad shit happens yeah. when we lose presence. Zeus's father, his name is Kronos. And uh, basically Kronos killed his own father. So he was afraid that the same thing would befall him. And this is why he was killing all his offspring, eating them actually. Zeus's mother's name was Rhea. And so Rhea brought her to the cave. He was, it's said that he was um, uh, nourished by cave nymphs. And then the Kuretis were the beings of the cave which would bind their weapons and so on in order to um, distract um, Kronos from discovering Zeus. And Zeus is the father of gods and mortals. So he is one of the primary gods of the Greek pantheon. And here we are entering. The cave of the team, secret cave, birthplace of Zeus. The stalactites here are huge, absolutely thick and beautiful, and layer over layer. That's the way they form, like they're only halfway down, they haven't connected with anything. These ones over here are the ground ones and eventually they're gonna meet up. Just like the whatever calcium or minerals that are in the deposits of the water. Right. Are coming down with it and eventually solidifying for them. Mm -hmm. I have to say personally that I've never seen such an impressive uh, cave or structure. Uh, the stalactites were all over the place. Uh, stalactites on top of stalactites uh, must have been there for like tens of thousands of years. Uh, completely awe-inspiring. Um, what do you think? Ancient, mm. ancient, and I think most impressive or most uh, yeah prominent was the the phallus at the opening of the cave. And just that balance of that masculine and feminine together. It was difficult to really connect with the energies of the caves because of how many people there were. Uh, however, like just being in the cave, number one, felt very sheltered and very safe and very protective. Protective, that's the word, yeah. In addition, it was like you could not help but feel the can I say ancientness uh, of, of the space? So whether we believe in the, uh, the gods of Greece, Egypt, Rome or whatnot, there's something to be said about this cave being the birthplace of an energy uh, that has influenced life and culture and so on. It just feels really old and something really pr primordial whether these certain deities or beings were protecting somebody or some being in this cave, you feel that protective energy. And that's what myth is. Myth is not really that things are fact, uh, but more that there's uh, a story associated to internal energies. And it's the same thing with all religions, including uh, Christianity and Jesus. It's not that all these stories are fact, but really uh, energies that are within us.
So on that note, I'm wishing everybody love, safety, protection, uh, reminding you to like and subscribe this page as we are on a road to a thousand subscribers. If you want to find out more about my tours or my trainings, check out sexualrenaissance.com or frankmondose.com. My podcast on soundcloud.com and yeah, just follow, reach out, leave a comment. Would love to hear from you and uh, let you hear what you have to think about the journeys we're taking as well as uh, what we're sharing here in, in terms of um, our heart and our mind and uh, a bit of our genitals as well. So remember, let love free. It's the only way we'll ever change anything. Peace.